you think? I think I think James Cameron has most certainly made Avatar for way more reasons than just money. I think that guy is a titan. I think he loves making films. And I think he just continued to want to push the boundaries and do things bigger and wilder than they than he than anyone could have ever dreamed. The only thing that's interesting at this point, which I feel like, and I haven't seen the movie yet, but I feel like the tech now has kind of surpassed what he was doing previously. Like, I don't know how a technologically revolutionary this new avatar is going to be. I almost sense <laughs> like it's going to be like what I see on the internet all the time. You know what I mean? Like I probably have seen promo videos for NFT drops that are more intricate and like mind blowing. Uh, anything that Avatar be... does, he probably, he had this, the 3D cameras for the last 15 years and he started filming. Yo. So I was hoping you were gonna be dressed like your idol today. Oh, I am. All right. Oh my it's god! Just on the inside, bro. Look at that. I'm right here, dude. It's like, it's like wearing. It's like this is my secret. So this is basically like the third layer of clothing. I had that. I had another thing, and I had a jacket. Right. No one even knows this exists, but me. But this is this is my secret. You know, you know what I'm saying this you is know. like yeah. I know no one else knows. Like I wear, I feel powerful. It's like you wearing know, like a thong. special pair of them. You ever wear a thong? You ever go out and just wear a thong? And it's like, no one knows that I'm wearing a thong but me. You ever do that, Mike? On three. Have you? One, two, three. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the pause, the pause said it all. Um, Uh, That's good. um, Yeah, that is me. Literally my idol. I should wear my glasses, but I don't have them here. So that's know. that's next. Yeah, that's the next thing. The next that's thing the next. is next. these round, clear glasses. Did you really print that out for this? No, this is his biography. Let me see that. Oh, all right. I would have been way more impressed. Yeah, it looked like it was like a big postcard cutout. Well, it him. looks like it looks like think? Avatar is doing really well. Okay, is it? Yeah, five hundred million. What's so what? far. 500 million. Is that good? I think that's really good. Okay, we don't know. We're, we've already made it known to the public that we have no idea. Dude, what 500 numbers. million in the first weekend is pretty huge, I'd say. I mean, like, the I last one it. made... That's two, a quarter of their budget, right? The last one... The last one made about $3 billion. I'm going to share my screen here. Total. Over... In what a weekend or like the entire? No, no, it's lifetime. I mean, entire... what I'm seeing. Okay, here. well, that's over two point over... nine billion. Oh. Avatar, Dude, hold up. go back. Did I see that? What? Two thousand and nine. Yeah, that's when it came out. I didn't. Oh my god, that's when it came out. That's how long ago it's been. Help me with math right now, Cameron. What does that mean? Fourteen fucking years. Yeah, Fourteen. Years? Years. 14 years so yeah wow first off that blew my mind but second off like yeah so it took 14 years for it to let's put that that in perspective which clearly is good but okay how much time was it between i mean all right should i do the math how many how many no i'm not i'm I'm saying like the first star wars to the empire strikes back right how, that was like what two years, three years in between even when you think about when return of the jedi when Return of the Jedi to the prequel movies. When was that? So, Return of the Return Jedi. Of the Jedi the prequel. So, that was 1983. And okay. then. No, you got a clear your inbox, bro. You got 18. 18- so 83, no. 93. Oh, that don't count. 15 though. years. That's the same. That's the same equivalent. It's the same equivalent, essentially, of the amount of time it took George Lucas from releasing the first three Star Wars films to the second three, the prequels. 
it's the same amount of time. You know what's fucking crazy, man? Is like 13, 16, 13, or I mean, it was 14 years, but 14 years seemed like such a longer number back then, right? Like, I thought the Avatar like came out like 10 years ago. I mean, even that's still close to the number, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like, like when I look at us and the last Avatar, it just seems like yesterday. Yeah. And when I think of the sagas between like the original three and the time they rebooted it, I was like, that's an ancient period. They're yeah. rebooting something <laughs> from back like 30 years ago. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like Tech before was we were alive. Was yeah. It just seemed so, so different. It's so bizarre, but that's a time thing. Anyway, 3 billion in 14 years. Okay. And the new one, well, the way of the water, time. the new one has done 500 million in its first weekend, essentially. But it's like diminishing returns, right? So the 500 the first weekend, then after that, it's like what, like 100 million? I don't know. Maybe it doubles. Like the next week, it doubles. I mean, Maybe everyone doubles. goes the first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that it goes to a billion like, dollars. There's got to be a. It's gonna go to about a billion, I would guess. Maybe 1.5. And then I don't know. Does it make another two billion over the next ten years? Probably. All right, all right, let's do it right now. What do you think? How long do movies stay in the movie theaters these days? <laughs> I mean, if they're money makers, they stay longer, right? For six months. Everything. Three to six months. This will be in the movie theaters for six maybe months? not six months. I don't know. That Three wasn't months. even normal. It'll it'll be in the listen. It'll be in the theaters through the Oscars. Movies. One of the Oscars. The Oscars are in Feb, March, so it'll be in theaters until then. February. Yeah. It'll definitely be in theaters until then. How? Dude. I mean, things have changed so much, right? But like, what was the average length a movie would say in the movie theaters when we were younger? Like, it was like oh, a month or two, here. two months maybe, right? No, we were kids. Movies would stay in no. the theaters for like, a, yeah. Movies stayed in theaters for a long time, much longer. There was a big window. Right, I guess because... Home video. It would stay in the theater and then it took months. No, no, no. All right, so... Man, they didn't come out right away. It took, that's... That, no, no, dude. It, it it took like six months to like eight months for you to get like that blockbuster VHS tape. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then DVDs, I remember being like, oh, it's out already. You know? And now with like HBO Max, I'm like, wasn't this just in the movie yeah. theaters Thursday? Yeah. It's not in the theaters yet, but it's <laughs> on HBO Max. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not even in the theaters yet, and I have access to it. Yeah. All right, so you think it'll be in a movie theaters for three months. Okay, so you think within three months, it'll accrue $1.5 billion. Yeah. Yeah. $1.5 billion. I, yeah. Well, I don't see it take a bet. I see, like, in three months, we should make up on this. Absolutely. You know how many people are going to see okay. this movie over Christmas? It this weekend? It made... Yeah. True. More people are going to see it. That's this why I'm shocked weekend. because it's more people are going to see it this coming weekend, and then all throughout New Year's into the New Year, people are just going to watch it. New Year's Eve, people because it's already it. made a third of it. It's already made a third of that. Five you know, so like how? I mean, how much? You know, every weekend following, like how much less does it make? You know, I, I think, I think this movie is going to tank. I'm going to take the cynic route. A lot of people cynic in the group. People are predicting that Babylon's not going to do too well. No, I know. What we talked about? Did we talk about this? In private. First, I want to put my number up. I think. I think if it lasts three months, I think it'll make three billion dollars. Oh wow! You think it'll double? (laughs) My number. So I I say this based. I say this based on. Nothing. These reasons. Okay. I have nothing to base it on. <laughs> so reason number one. I'm gonna say three million billion, and that's my number. So let's okay. see who's right, everybody. Cameron's one point five to Mikey Dreya's three, because everything I do is twice as strong as Cameron. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Next. Good. Babylon.
Good. Babylon. You know, look, I honestly, Babylon. I hate measuring movies like this, talking about box office numbers and stuff. It's really annoying. It, it shouldn't be how you talk about a film. Like I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing both of these movies. I'm going to see Avatar and I'm going to see Babylon. I'm going to see. Yes, yeah, I agree. I'm I don't see- think money matters. I think money, money's a stupid indicator. I'm just kind of curious because Avatar is only made to make money. I mean, not really, but it ain't, it ain't, you're not watching it for like the in-depth storytelling. Do you think? I think, I think James Cameron has most certainly made Avatar for way more reasons than just money. I think that guy is a Titan. I think he loves making films and I think he just continued to want to push the boundaries and do things bigger and wilder than they, than he, than anyone could have ever dreamed. The only thing that's interesting at this point, which I feel like, and I haven't seen the movie yet, but I feel like the tech now has kind of surpassed what he was doing previously. Like, I don't know how a technologically revolutionary this new avatar is going to be. I almost sense <laughs> like it's going to be like what I see on the internet all the time. You know what I mean? Like I probably have seen promo videos for NFT drops that are more intricate and like mind-blowing uh, is bro, anything that avatar be... does he probably he had this the 3d cameras for the last 15 years and he started filming Yo, tech moves tech moves so fast now i think it just blew like, in the dust and, like, and he was invested <laughs> he just couldn't he's gonna walk up he's like he just doesn't walk up to a crowd like hello <laughs> everyone I'm working diligently on a revolutionary idea. Yeah. So, Avatar Avatar 7. Please, please (laughs) take your, to the right hand of your chair, you'll find plastic lenses. (laughs) Place them over your eyes. Buckle into your seat. (laughs) Then it's just like, the seat's just like, (laughs) just take left to right while you watch the movie. (laughs) <laughs> like you're in Universal, right? Yeah, I, that. So that, this this brings me to what I was gonna say. I, I don't know. I'm not saying James Cameron's the man. I'm just saying I think the that man. he's making. I feel he's more about not innovating, um, storytelling, but innovating movie making, right? Like I feel like his goals are more like I always want to be the next one to do something with technology yeah and movie making yeah. and integrate mm-hmm. i don't think he's trying to like tell stories that are going to win oscars though the titanic did but no he's tr- he's well, winning whatever. a certain type of oscar but like a spectacle oscar he's won the great oscar. i mean he's the man I mean, but listen this, so this, this i was talking about this week. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. i want to I wanna stop on this point i was talking about this recently with somebody um how, we were talking about mad max and they were like oh you know it doesn't deserve academy awards or whatever and i, I was just like what i was like that movie's we talked about off, this- no not you and i someone else first of all a movie like mad max is a spectacle okay it's a cinematic yeah. feat to achieve that yeah it's not like you know heart-wrenching story it's just you know it's a musical yeah. it's like this visual musical it's incredible right that's the spectacle cinema has always had the spectacle you know, we, we've got like, you know, the Frank Capra stuff, but then you still have, you know, the Wizard of Oz or whatever the spectacle is, where it's just like, whoa. And that's a great Hollywood tradition. Um, but the Wizard, so I think Wizard of Oz had James Cameron makes movies like great that. story. What? So the Wizard of Oz had a great story to okay. back it up. I think you know what I mean. I know you. You know, but I'm just saying some, sometimes spectacles spectacle for the sake of spectacle. Sometimes, but there's a, there's, there. No, he does them well. And first off, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to put a pin in that. First thing I want to say about the Mad Max thing is, all right, when people say it doesn't deserve an Oscar, well, bro, like, what do you mean? An Oscar is an event with many categories. It definitely deserves an Oscar for visual effects and for costume design and okay, well, potentially even fucking, you know, clar- like as, as, clarify, as the best movie. To clarify, uh, we were talking about best picture. This other gentleman's argument was no, that Mad doesn't Max deserve. doesn't deserve best picture to win. I think it might Okay, all right. And I completely so, disagree. I completely disagree. I think a movie like that could totally be best picture. I mean Okay. But this comes down to 
what, and I was going to say like, what makes, and look, and just who you are as, as a person, as well as a person, who you are as a, as a, an artist, you are someone you, you know, just to a little background for everyone, you were the kid at fucking 10 years old on a skateboard, uh, videoing your friends with a fucking That's video camera, right? It is, it is. Cause let me explain you you love the you love the um filmmaking storytelling are two things there is i know what you're there saying there is the I technical side cin- and there's storytelling right right but here's my argument to that huh? point. i know what you're saying i love cinema here's my argument you know what my point is i do what's my point that i love the the craft of cinema and i get a little more obsessed with that than the usual person yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. i know the what your point the is, technical but- side Right. So, but I disagree because uh, there's two points that I think are great arguments why a movie like Mad Max should win. Not just because a geek like me loves the spectacle of it and the, all of that, but I'm going to go as far as to say more people, more audience members like Mad Max over 90% of the other movies that it was probably up against that year. More people have probably yeah. seen it and more people probably liked it. So you got to ask yourself, what makes a great movie? You know, when a movie is really performing on all those levels. And it's also got massive amounts of people who really enjoy it. Just all unanimously agree. Yeah. Like that is something cool. That is cinema. That is a, that is a form of cinema. I think it's but, been but a lot of people the like last few tr- years by the, I don't even want to say superhero movies because even, you know, there's like dragon movies and all these types of movies yeah. that they, they just abuse CGI. And it's so like accessible it's lost its heart and it's not really a spectacle because you know like even a movie back in the day like independence day was a spectacle movie remember that movie when the aliens are blowing mm-hmm. everything up right that movie was amazing mm-hmm. different type of movie different type of different type of spectacle but still a spectacle i mean ben hur those movies were spectacle movies you know those were mm-hmm. those were people would go to those yeah. movies and just be like whoa yeah you know doesn't it it didn't have to involve CGI, but it was still a spectacle. Correct. King Kong. They were, epic, they were epic movies. Right. They were movies, they were movies that uh, of of grandose ideas that they were pulling off. But what I'm saying is just because people like it go just because someone most most people like a movie, I'm sorry. I'm the cynic. I don't believe that makes the movie good. No. I don't I think agree. because a lot of, I don't think because oh, let me say, when I don't think because the majority and getting your emotions going and does all the stuff that a geek like me likes and the audience is driving, that's a, that's a double whammy. Sure, sure, if that's what it is. But what just by it? saying, oh. You got to cry in the what? fucking movie? You gotta, it's like the last metric is, do you cry? What uh, other metric is there? No. Critics that's like right. it. I don't think Audiences crying is like it. Filmmakers Cameron, like let me, it. Let me, let, me, let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, sure. If you want to use critics and people, fine, fine. You want to use that metric, the metric of critically acclaimed and audience approved? Sure, I guess that's what it is. Because what I'm basically trying to say is audience approved is not the only metric for a good movie because then Transformers would be a good movie. I agree with that. You know, so, but but that's what you said that. You said like, if people go to see a movie and they love it, well then it's a great movie. You missed what I said. That's not what I said. I said, if a geek like me, I said, if a geek like me likes a movie, and the audience likes it on a mass no, level. No, you said all right, all right, all right. you just said that. If we rewind the tape, before. like I'm gonna rewind the tape. Four man. minutes, four minutes, and four minutes and twelve seconds before you said, if audience likes it, what more do you need, right? So I'm, I, I was still going on that. So what I'm just trying to say is like, yeah, okay, but we agree on that. And the same with acting, the same with performances. Like just because someone's popular, just because a movie's popular, doesn't mean it's good. Um, then again, it's all subjective, obviously. But there has to be some metric in art that could be like, this person's good, this movie's good, right? Because it's all validation based. Like you, like as an actor, I don't know if I'm good until someone goes, "Hey, you're good." <laughs> no, like you don't know. Um, same with art on a wall. What makes it good? Someone's like, "That's worth a lot." Okay, it's all subjective. We know this, right? So same with movies. Like, what makes a movie good? Just because some fucking nerdy critic says it's good because a lot of people go and watch it. So it makes money. Like what, what, you know, what, what is the metric? It has to be a combo of those two things. Okay. 
And there'll still be someone out there, probably, who goes, that fucking movie sucked. <laughs> and are they wrong? It's hard, right? It's just a hard, it's a hard thing tell you to, this. to, to, to decipher hard. between because it's, it's, not, it's not that hard. Anyone who says No, it is because you can tell who the best baseball player is, who hit the more home runs. Anyone so, who says the metrics, Godfather simple, sucks simple. is wrong. Okay, why? They're wrong. Anyone, if there's a person wow. out there that believes that the Godfather is I'm not, not one of them. I love the Godfather. I know that. Just hear what I'm saying. If there's any person that exists that goes, that's not a good movie. I, the movie sucks. They are wrong. Yeah. They are so unequivocally all of Gen Z are wrong. wrong. They are wrong. <laughs> and wrong. there are movies like okay. this. There are certain movies that are if anyone goes 2001 a Space Odyssey sucks or is not a good movie. Oh, so that, much, so that many people person that. is wrong. They are wrong. <laughs> they're wrong. It's <laughs> you won't even hear it. You won't even hear it. Yeah, no, they, they, they oh are absolutely – that is a – You're so lucky you're married, bro. You wouldn't do well in the dating world, bro. You'd be out on a date right now. Like, so tell me your favorite movies. You'd be like, 2001 Space Odyssey. And they'd be like, what the fuck is that piece of shit? And then you'd be single the rest of your life because that's all you'd get from these people. Point is, is uh, there's a lot of people who would feel that way. Um, do you think that – you said this. I'm trying to say. Do you think that Godfather is the best movie ever made? Um, for me, it is no question. As far as others want to argue about it, like there's a there's a couple others that you can entertain the argument. Sure. What? Like what? Other Name movies? at least two others. Citizen yeah, yeah I want to hear if one movie pops up. What? Citizen Kane is always Sin on City. That. No, C Citizen uh, Kane. Yeah. Uh, I thought you said Sin City. I was like, my man's speaking truth right now. Yeah. Lawrence yeah, of Arabia. I was wondering if you were going to say Citizen Kane. Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. All right. So let's backtrack. Why is Citizen Kane? And I know why, because I watch this in film studies. Like, I know why. But I want to hear what you say. Why is Citizen Kane the best movie that's ever been made? I don't think it is, but it's one of the greats um, for many reasons. Um, look. First off, what he was doing was ahead of his time, cinematically, the way he right. told stories, the way he was cutting and telling stories, big epic stories, moving along them, but focused on essential character, like epic tales of titans. But the way he did it was really spectacular. His cinematic techniques, all of the ways he's bridging from one scene to the next, the way he's shooting it. I mean, this was a master. This was a fucking genius like, no one was doing it like that back then dude, no one was doing it like that i mean he invented it he it was just a new cinematic language that is it right. still holds this up is today. What I it still holds right. up today every all the shots the way he's moving dollies through scenes and like oh my gosh it's like a state it's like it's like so good could you right? explain to people right now and then I he also know. acts in it he 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 acts in the movie he plays the lead character, Orson Welles. Okay, he plays Citizen Kane in Citizen Kane. Yeah. So the motherfucker was what, 23? Like 26. 26. Just a just a just incredible, incredible stuff. And then he um, just fell into to just being an alcoholic the rest well, of you know, his life. You know, well, they shut him down. He got blacklisted because of making that movie. So he he yeah, you don't know this story? No, this is an incredible it. story. I just so, had a conversation about him yesterday, but no one said that. Okay, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the story. This is the meat of the story. Okay, after he made this movie, he made the movie it was it was pretty much he, he was making the movie about William Randolph Hearst. Okay, William Randolph Hearst at the time was like Elon Musk. Now mm -hmm. he was a, one of the wealthiest, not the wealthiest man in the world. People hated him. Okay? Yeah, 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 they hated the him. newsies were about that. Yeah. He bought all the newspapers. He came from gold and mm -hmm. like gold money, passed from his father, found tons of gold. I mean, he was just wealth. Then he bought up all these newspapers. I and mean, he was a titan. And mm -hmm. no one talked mm -hmm. bad about him. He owned Hollywood. He owned all the newspapers, all the stars where he's at his house, the whole deal. So when he wanted to make a movie to take down William Randolph Hearst, that was like, you don't make this movie. So William Randolph Hearst, when he found out that this movie was made, he said, can it, kill it. This movie doesn't come out. And 
it's a crazy story, but um, Orson Welles had to literally steal his movie, hide it, the whole deal. They shut it down. Finally, he was able to get it out. It was a flop. Like it didn't, it didn't come out the right way. And he was completely blacklisted from Hollywood after that. Like it, it was, it just that William Randolph Hearst had so much power. He was able to like snuff him out. Uh, I never knew that. Yeah. I also didn't know that it was about William Randolph Hearst. Yeah. Uh, Citizen Kane is William Randolph Hearst. Well, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And that's actually it makes me want to see the movie again a lot more. I haven't seen it since college. So um, that's one of the great movies. Wow, it's fascinating. Um, yeah. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. It's an incredible film. Um, some people say 2001. Some people say that. I don't think so. Um, I think, I think, um, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't get, it doesn't get the credit it deserves, but it, it's, it's clear when you watch this fucking movie, uh, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. That's Dumb and Dumber. Say Dumb and Dumber. It usually goes like God the best movies. Kane, Dumb and Dumber. It's, Dumb and dumb. It doesn't get enough respect. It's clear when you watch it. I mean, everything about storytelling to just yeah. execution and style. It's just, it's it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. Jim Carrey was blacklisted after. Say that with just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey's been blacklisting himself. Um. Yeah, man. Well, look, blacklisted movie. You know what? I think I think we're gonna have to call it here. Your connection is not great. I thought it was your connection. It's one of ours connection, but for me, it's you. you. Keep, you keep, I'm having a lot of trouble. You with keep you. freezing up. All right, all well, good. All right, well, we had a good one. Peace. Glad we did it.